Action, camera. The camera's eye catches the cutie's eye, takes an admiring look at the shell-like ear, and what a shell. Rosebud lips that part to reveal teeth carved in crystal, tresses as dark as ebon or fair as spun gold. But what of the nose, the feature on which she spends most of her time? We'll put the nose in the news and let it tell its own tale. The kind of nose most favoured by artists, if we may poke our aristocratic nose into their business, is the Grecian nose. It's a nose with the smoothest bridge line, the nose that knows best what a nice nose should be. Another kind of nose that's very much in the running, so to speak, is the Roman nose. It's the nose with a hump, like some of the people who've got that kind of nose. No names, no pack drill. The beak that's big and bulbous reminds one of the famous Alice Sloper. It's a large nose that goes with a large art. A nose reader will tell you that a bad temper always turns up with a nose that turns up, even though you call it retrousse. Remember the old Vanity Fair cartoons? What a gallery of noses they were. Compare the straight Earl of Shaftesbury's with the squat Mr. Justice Bobbills, the protruding Lord Chelmsford's, the long Sir John Parkington's, the angular Marquis of Westminster's and the sharp Sir Henry Bulwer's. You might think the sole purpose of the nose is to smell things with it, and in some cases it isn't a bad idea. But that's not the whole notion of the nose, because the sense of smell by itself is not very important. The chief function of the nose, conch, snitch or snozzle is to help the sense of taste. Haven't you ever held your nose to take away a nasty taste? Now for some figures. The average girl from 15 to 50 powders her nose 130,000 times. At 10 pats a time, each of a force of an eighth of an ounce, that's a total of four and a half tons right on the nose. <laughs>